What song wraps you year after year? What song surrounds you? There's multiple times I have just sat in my car listening to this little clip from camp. And the Spirit of God just fills my car as I'm just worshiping Him. And instantaneously I feel that same presence that was with us in that moment. And that song wraps me and encourages me and uplifts me, let me know that like what we're doing is worth it and to keep fighting, to keep on going, to not let go of the songs of the past because they are the promises of your future. Believers need songs. Young people, you need a song that can go where I can't follow. A song that still teaches you when you've become the teacher. A song that guides you when you find yourself alone in the lead. A song your father sings over you. In him you have your hiding place and he will protect you from trouble and surround you with songs of deliverance. Christians ought to always have a song of hope in their heart, one that carries them through the toughest trials and seasons of life. One that fights with them, one that sings confidently, the battle belongs to the Lord and I'm gonna see a victory. A song that keeps hope alive even when darkness closes in. A song that sings louder when the world wants you to be silent. A song that when you feel forgotten or abandoned, its melody still stands beside you when you're crying. When hope seems lost and fear tries to chase you away, without fail you'll find its lyrics running alongside you that day. Never resting, never ceasing, no matter how far you go, the song keeps on repeating. A wanderer come home. And when you suffer the pain of loss and defeat, the interlude says, Selah, silence, to pause and rest at his feet. When the seasons change, let its rhythm carry you, marching toward the prize which Christ has prepared for you. When the grip of death starts pulling and the lights begin to fade, still your lips whisper softly, there ain't no grave. Softer and quieter, like the coo of a dove, your now fragile voice receives strength from its source above. As that old song grows louder, now accompanied with new instruments, as the gates of heaven swing wide, his voice beckons me, come in, friend. The King of creation invites you to sing with songs of deliverance. Let freedom ring with angelic choirs and heavenly hosts. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Singing the songs of deliverance that led you by the hand. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock upon which I stand. From beginning to the end throughout every generation, singing your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For thine is the kingdom and power and glory forever and ever and ever, amen. Until that day when the last trumpet sounds, kings of the earth have laid their crowns. Your song then breaks through the veil of earth and heaven as our king comes to avenge all his children. With one loud voice, the earth will be shaken. Then every ear will hear its final proclamation. The kingdoms of the earth have become the kingdom of our Lord. All hail King Jesus, the Savior of the world. This is not that song, but it's a melody that will help carry you through. Learn the songs of your Savior, sing the scriptures, and see the deliverance of your God. And when God moves, when He speaks, when He shows up during youth group, when He shows up in your prayer closet, when He shows up at camp, when he shows up when you're all alone and a new song is on your lips, sing it. As the Father sings songs of deliverance over you. Because on that day we will cry out, all hail King Jesus. All hail King Jesus.
why we've come here tonight. It's why we're enduring the hot. It's why we're facing so many hardships, honestly, is because Satan doesn't want you to encounter Yeshua. When you're trying to figure out how you're going to pay for camp, you're wondering if your friend's going to go when it's hot, when you disagree with what people are saying, when your bus breaks down on you, there's an attack against you getting here. But now that you're here, there's no stopping what God is going to do. You see, you've, you, you, by coming here, you've crossed over and you are about to lay hold of the promise of God for your life. You've crossed over hardship. You've crossed over grief. Thank you for each and every one of these students and what you're doing. We praise you, we honor you. We do all this in your name. Now that your foot has stepped on the other side, God is about to give to you the fulfillment of the promises that he has for you. He is going to unlock dreams. He's going to unlock a vision for your life. He is going to give you hope in a future that cannot be taken away. He is going to bring you into the fullness of your promised land. He is bringing you into your Rehoboth, into your wide open space the Lord is giving you. Because you have endured, you have crossed over, and you have said, I am setting myself apart for this week. Yes, it will be fun, but I am going to encounter Jesus.
crossed over loss and frustration. You've crossed over all kinds of obstacles just to arrive here tonight. And now that your foot has stepped on the other side, God is about to give to you the fulfillment of the promises that he has for you. He is going to unlock dreams. He's going to unlock a vision for your life. He is going to give you hope and a future that cannot be taken away. He is going to bring you into the fullness of your promised land. He is bringing you into your Rehoboth, into your wide open space the Lord is giving you. Because you have endured, you have crossed over, and you have said, I am setting myself apart for this week. Yes, it will be fun, but I am going to encounter Jesus. And I'm going to take a bold risk in faith. Because every camp I've been at this summer, I have prayed the same prayers. And that is that God would deliver every person in the sound of my voice, in that camp, from every mental health disability, disorder, or dysfunction, from ADD to ADHD to bipolar to birth defects to autism to every single mental health disorder, defect, or disability that affects the mind. That includes body dysphoria, that includes anorexia, that includes bulimia, that includes gender identity confusion, that includes every single one of the effects against the mind that God is going to heal you at this camp tonight. And you are going to be so free that you won't even know what it was like to be the old you. And God is going to empower you and equip you to wash your mind with the renewing of the water of the word. And as you wash your thoughts with God's word, as you wake up in the morning and you read the word, I even challenge you at this camp, get your Bible and don't be found without it. When you're out on, down on the waterfront, open it up and say, God, do you want to speak to me? And read a scripture. Right before you sit down and eat your lunch, Open up your Bible and say, God, fill my belly with your word first. Right before you go to bed, say, Lord, let the last thing I think about tonight is you. And you read a scripture. And as you yield your mind to the renewing work of the word of God, I believe that every single mental health disability disorder will be healed in this place tonight. Because I know it says in my Bible that as it is in heaven, so shall it be on earth. And I want to contend for the miracles that seem impossible. I want to contend for the breakthroughs that people don't usually go after. So if you're here tonight, we're not giving an altar call now, but I want you to get ready. Even as in the Bible, when, when the Israelites were about to cross over the River Jordan to go into their promised land, Joshua told them, consecrate yourselves. Set yourselves apart. Reserve your thoughts, your, 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 your words, your actions. Even just remove yourself from common use. And set yourself apart and prepare to be used for God's purposes. For the holy work of God. For righteousness. And I want to encourage you tonight. Set yourself apart for the working of God in you and through you. Even if you're like, man, I'm hurting, that doesn't make you disqualified to release healing to someone else. Even if you're like, I'm broken, that doesn't disqualify you from being a conduit of God's restoration for somebody else. Father God, I ask that you would move in this place. God, I thank you that your word is the greatest tool we have. It's the greatest weapon we have. Even Jesus, when he went out into the wilderness after being baptized by John the Baptist and the Spirit of God descending upon him on a dove, and he was driven out into the wilderness for prayer and fasting for 40 days to encounter, to battle that dragon, that serpent, Satan, the only tool that he used against the devil himself was the Word of God. It is the mightiest weapon you have, young person. And if you can't quote a Bible verse, I'm going to encourage you, you better start loading up your arsenal. 
Start memorizing that scripture because it is the only weapon you will have is the truth of God. Renew your minds through the hearing and hearing of the word of God. And tonight we are going to have an amazing opportunity to hear the word of God. And I want to encourage you young people to not only open your ears to hear, but open the ears of your heart to receive. Because it would be a shame to come this far, overcome this many obstacles, just to allow 10,000 potty breaks and your cell phone to distract you and disrupt you from what God wanted for you. Because he is not fashion plans. He won't send you a push notification. He is going to wait for you patiently to fix your eyes on him. And then he will move upon you. And he will heal you. And he will renew your mind. He will renew your heart. He will renew your body. Even those who have given themselves over to the earthly pleasures of this life, God will bring complete renewal to, the, your, to your body, to your heart, to your soul. Don't allow Satan to rob you because you are still stuck for the uses of common things. I wonder what's happening at home. I wonder what my friends back home are doing. I wonder what's on social media. That's all common. You're kings and queens. Don't lower yourself to common standards again. Elevate your thinking to that of royalty. You are beyond these things. Tonight, you have been made kings and queens by the redeeming love of Yeshua Jesus at the cross. And as you hear the word tonight, set yourself apart. Consecrate yourself. Remove yourself from the common and fix your eyes on how are you going to use me tonight, God? Not just how are you going to move in me, but how are you going to move through me? I want to be a vessel of your power and your love and your forgiveness. Because the Son of Man has the ability not only to heal, but to forgive sins. And so tonight you will walk in newness of life. Father God, I thank you for your word tonight. God, I thank you for moving on us and through us in worship. The presence of God is real. And I don't want you to shrink back, young person, and I'm going to end with this. When you hear someone praying in a weird language, they're just walking in Acts chapter 2. It's a Bible verse for the day of Pentecost. God, by his Holy Spirit, filled the upper room, and they were enabled divinely by the Holy Spirit to pray with tongues of angels, which is the perfect prayers of God by the Holy Spirit speaking through them. For me, it just sounds like and if you have a heavenly language here, I don't want you to be intimidated or afraid to cry it out and to, and to pray it out. And, to, and, to, and when I don't know the words of the song, I just start singing in the Holy Ghost. I just start praying the Holy Ghost. When I don't know what to say and it's an awkward silent pause and I'm looking like, is Pastor Kevin going to come up and do transition? Yes, I will in good time. I just start praying in the Holy Ghost because I don't want to look around for somebody else. I want to look to Jesus. So if you have that heavenly language, we're going to just take 30 seconds and end this time of worship and, and, and prayer and step into the word. But I want you to just, if you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, you pray with the Holy Ghost. I want you to take 30 seconds with me and pray in the Holy Ghost out loud. Come on, just let it raise, let it rise up in this house. Some of y'all are going to get filled with the Holy Ghost right now. Some of you guys, God's gonna unlock that, that gift in you right now. You feel that stirring in you right now. Keep praying. The Lord is moving in here. Ain't nobody even gonna put hands on you. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit right now. You're gonna be saved, healed, and delivered all in one moment. Come on, shut up. It brings the yoke of bondage. 
is. We will not be intimidated. We will not be ashamed by the world. We will not be afraid to do, use the gifts you've given us. Father God, move in this house tonight. And by this house, I mean us. Because we are the dwelling place of God. Young person, you are the dwelling place of God. Young person, God has chosen to dwell in you. His inhabitants on the earth, his dwelling place on the earth is in his people. He doesn't have palaces. He doesn't have tents. He doesn't have, ha have, have buildings. He has people. And he dwells in them. And he has yielded himself to be used by you. So as you go, he goes with you. And as you trust him, he leads you and guides you into all righteousness. So God, here we are. Use me. Everyone in this room, I just want you to repeat after me. Say, Jesus, help me to hear your word tonight. Remove distractions from me. Heal my body. Heal my mind. I am free. I am delivered. And I am a vessel of the power of God because Christ lives in me and whom the Son has set free is free indeed I am free I am free I am free because Christ made me free in Jesus name Amen I want to encourage you guys to clap up for the worship team you can find your way on back to your seats here we'll flick some lights on so you don't get lost